Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. I hope your 2022 is off to a good start so far. The beginning of the year is a pretty arbitrary thing. There is nothing in the world around us that tells us about in a week and a half after the winter solstice, that's when the new year begins. It's the system we've inherited. And other peoples count it in different ways with new years in the spring or the fall or in a few weeks. So we know that this is kind of this made up thing that isn't based on much, but it also matters. It also is worthwhile when the calendar changes to pause and look back and pause and look forward and think about how we might live into this coming year with intention and integrity and in a little more alignment with our deepest values. So come, let us gather, come, let us worship together. Good morning. I'm Gordon Bolar, and I'm here as a member of the Sunday Services Committee of uh, People's Church. I'd like to welcome you to this service, whether you're attending in person or online. Um, and a special welcome to anyone who might be visiting. We hope there will be a time soon when we could all get together, get to know one another a lot better. People's Church is a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association. It's part of a long tradition of liberal religion. Liberalism has a faith that although the path of progress is uncertain, if we work together, we can shape our church community along with broader communities toward a better future. And speaking of the future, today's service, we say goodbye to the old year. We look forward to what future, what the future might hold uh, with the new year. Thank you.
And now, as I light the chalice here at People's Church, we encourage you to light a chalice at home, type into the chat box, uh, a chalice is lit in your street, your neighborhood, your town. We light this chalice on the brink of a new year, letting go of what has been, open and hopeful for what may come, renewed, restored, ready to live life fully anew. May we move forward with intention. People's Church is a community that supports one another in good times and hard times and in between times. One of the ways that we do that is by taking time during our service to share the joys and sorrows that we hold in our hearts. So if you have something that you wish to share with our community today, I invite you to type it into the chat box on Zoom. I will pause recording before I read it aloud so none of your news becomes broadcast on YouTube later. And Gordon will place a stone in our bowl of water as a symbol of how what impacts each of us affects all of us and how we are held together in community and in care. So if you have so now it's time to write in the chat box and if you have something that you you want the stone placed but don't want to share the words of what's unfolding in your life that is fine too just type stone and we will place a stone for you too Our first reading this morning is Burning the Old Year by Naomi Shihab Nye. Letters swallow themselves in seconds. Notes, friends tied to the doorknob, transparent scarlet paper sizzle like moth wings. Mary, 
the air. So much of any year is flammable. Lists of vegetables, partial poems, orange, swirling, flame of days, so little is a stone. Where there was something and suddenly isn't, an absence shouts, celebrates, leaves a space. I begin again with the smallest numbers. Quick dance, shuffle of losses and leaves, only the things I didn't do crackle after the blazing dies. Our second reading is Ne'ila by Marge Percy. Ne'ila is the name of the fifth prayer service on Yom Kippur, the Jewish Day of Atonement. It happens every fall. The hinge of the year, the great gates opening, and then slowly, slowly closing on us. I always imagine those gates hanging over the ocean, fiery over the stone gray waters of evening. We cast what we must change about ourselves onto the waters flowing to the sea. The sins, errors, bad habits, whatever you call them, dissolve. When I was little, I cried out, I, 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 I want, I want. Older, I feel less important. A worker bee in the hive, a, a worker bee in the hive of history, miles of hard labor to make my sweetness. The gates are closing, the light is failing. I kneel before what I love, imploring that it may live. So much breaks, wears down, fails in us. We must forgive our broken promises, their sharp shards in our hands. And now we will burn the old year, as the poet says, or at least the parts of it that we want to burn. I invite you to think of this year. It has been momentous. I started thinking of the events of this year and could not even comprehend that they've all happened in the last year. The insurrection on January 6th, the inauguration of a new president, the continuing COVID-19 pandemic. This year brought us vaccinations for so many. And this year also brought fear and fury and frustration when we realized that the vaccinations were not the end of this virus. It is continuing to spread and mutate and infect and reinfect. This year brought the US military withdrawal from Afghanistan and new refugees into our community. There was the Olympics and the ever given. And as always, we live with the continuing impacts of climate change and the extreme weather events that that brings. And that's just the national and global scale of this year. Because there's the smaller milestones. For many, we got to see people again that we had not seen in a long time as vaccinations made things a little safer, at least for a time. There were the, the losses and griefs of every year made more complicated by this year. Deaths, 
the relationships and jobs that came to an end, the hopes unrealized, and all of it made more complicated because it was not easy to gather, to support one another with hugs and conversation and companionable silence the way we did before, without ever pausing to think about how lucky we were. If we were all together in the flesh right now, we would be passing baskets with small slips of paper on them. And I would encourage you to write or draw on it what you don't want to carry with you into 2022, what you want to leave behind. And then we would burn it up and watch the spectacular flames. And obviously, that we can't do it like that this year, though we will be building a bonfire on the church grounds this evening. So please come by between six and eight, and we will have flash paper for you then. Instead, we modify the ritual like we modify and reimagine and recreate so much of our lives right now. So think about what you want to leave behind as we begin a new year. Gordon and I will burn flash paper in a moment. And you can watch that. But it's not the same. So I encourage you to create your own ritual that is meaningful to you. Magician supply stores have the flash paper if that's what you want to do. Or you could also do something like draw on a tray of sand or snow, a word or a picture that you do not want to carry and then wipe it clean. You could use a washable marker and write on a piece of paper and then dip that paper into water and watch the word or picture float away or something else. Find the metaphor or ritual that speaks to you in this moment helps you move into this new time. And there's no timeline on this. I spoke earlier about how January 1st is a pretty arbitrary time to start a new year. So if you're not feeling it this month, but it speaks to you next month or next week or in five months, that is fine. You can always pause to say goodbye to something whenever you need to. Do what is meaningful. Do what is possible. So Gordon and I are now going to burn a few pieces of the mesmerizing flash paper. And I invite those of you, I invite you to name aloud what you are envisioning flaming into nothingness. On Zoom, you can yell it as loud as you want because you are all muted. In person, you might want to say it more quietly. What do you want to leave behind as the calendar pages turn? Rituals matter. They can be an outward sign of an inward change. And they don't in itself make change generally. 
we have to do the work to make a change so, but a ritual can help. Help us remember what matters most. Help us put a, a line between a before and an after. It can help us feel more committed. And so I hope you are able to mark this turning of the year in a way that brings meaning to you. People's people are generous people in so many ways. And they are a people who help. I have a small story about that. At our, we had two Christmas Eve services this year, one on Zoom and one in person on the church grounds. And for the in-person service, I recruited my mom who was visiting to come and help me set things up early. We put some luminarias along the planters in the front of the church and brought out the chairs and did the things that you do to get ready. And at one point while we were setting up, she said, how long do you think it's going to take us to, to clean everything out and, and put things away? And I said, I don't know, maybe five or 10 minutes total. Everybody who's here is going to help. And she looked at me kind of skeptically. And, and I was like, I don't think I'll even have to announce it. I think people will just jump in and fold up and stack chairs and blow out candles and get the things that need to be inside the church building, inside the church building. And of course, everybody did. And that's one of the most amazing things about our community is that when there is a need in front of people, when there is a task that needs to be done, people do not shy away from it. They lean in, they do the work that needs to be done, and it makes it so much easier for everyone. My mother and I were not blowing out candles and packing away luminaria for an hour because everybody did the work for five minutes. It was amazing. And that happens again and again in our church where we do things together as a team so much better, so much more powerfully, and with so much more meaning than we can ever do alone. So in addition to our labor, that happens with our money. We are able to do things together that we cannot do alone. And so this is the moment when I invite you to be, continue to be the generous people that you are and continue to support the good and important work of People's Church. The offering will now be received.
Let us now give thanks for all that sustains us. From the countless gifts we each have been given, gifts of life and love and sustenance, we bring these small portions to share in the works of love, which none of us can accomplish alone. pocket by Teresa L. Soto. When they are kids, it seems like a profession, talking to rocks and listening for their beauty, for the song that says that they belong together. They pick up the shiny one, the round one, the flat one, the pretty one. They store them in boxes, in bags, in pockets. Don't worry. They're very clean after being laundered. But what you will miss, unless you pay attention, is this. There is always the possibility that we can treasure what is in our pockets rather than the thing we have yet to attain. There is the knowledge of the earth beneath all of us that a plain, sparkly rock can give. It is the hurtling round rock on which we race around the universe. There is the sense of beauty all around, but also choosing to experience it, to seize it and savor it. You could do worse than a practical ongoing yes. This community will not begrudge you any reminder of your individual, our shared strength. Carry it with you everywhere. Be ready to share it. You know where you can get more. Darkest Before Dawn 
by James Cruz. Three days into the new year, and despite the lack of adequate light, our white Phalaenopsis orchid has eased open a third delicate bloom. Perhaps coaxed by the warmth of the wood stove a few feet away, the orchid thrives in its tiny pot shaped like the shell of a nautilus. Sending out new stems and glossy leaves, its aerial roots green at the tips, reaching upward like tentacles to sip the morning air. These blooms stir something too long asleep in me, proving with stillness and slow growth what I haven't been able to trust these past few months, that hope and grace still reign in certain sectors of the living world, that there are laws which can never be overturned by hateful words or the wishes of power-hungry men. Be patient, this orchid seems to say, and reveal your deepest self, even in the middle of winter, even in the darkness before the coming dawn. Now I invite you to set an intention for the year to come. Perhaps you will pick a word to guide your year. Perhaps you'll want to begin a new practice. Perhaps you'll continue something that gave you strength and courage through 2021 or return to something that was meaningful to you some time ago that you have left let fall by the wayside. If we were in person, we'd be passing out a basket filled with rocks. And I'd ask each of you to take one. I like the symbolism of rocks for some of the reasons that Gordon read in that poem. These small objects have been here longer than any of us can imagine in most cases. And they will continue so much longer than us. They invite me to remember the profound scale of time, which is helpful to me when my day to day worries take up so much of my mental energy. Maybe it could be helpful for you too. Over the past few years, my relationship with hope has changed. My sense that the future is something that I can count on and plan for has changed. Maybe that is your story too. Hope feels risky now in a new way because we know that things might not go the way we want them to. Some of this, some of us have known that for a long time, and I recognize that I might be later in this learning than others. So I try not to be too attached to timelines or outcomes because this pandemic reminds me again and again how very much is beyond my control. I can't control so much as this pandemic continues to unfold, as there are new variants, as my youngest child is still not eligible for vaccination. I cannot control when and if things in my life might return to something that feels like normal. And expectations, at least for me, are too often a recipe for disappointment. And so this year, I am looking forward with modest hopes. Modest hopes, small hopes for living better into my own values. Hopes to take good care of the part of the world that I can reach. Hope to love well the people 
for a mind to love, hopes for being a good steward of my attention, hopes for feeling at the end of each day, a small amount of pride for the choices I made that day, hopes for paying attention to what is in front of me and finding the joy and peace that is there, that is available all around us. So I invite you to find a modest hope, a small hope or two for your own for 2022. A hope or an expectation or a new way of being that you can live into regardless of what is unfolding in the world beyond you. Regardless of viruses or climate change or politics. What is your modest hope for this year? Maybe you hope for something good to continue. Maybe you hope for change. Some people pick words every year to guide them. What is your word or your way of being? How can you help this modest, small hope be realized this year? Now, I invite you to notice something nearby that has been on earth longer than you have. It could be a rock. It could be a special object in your home. Perhaps you live in an older house. You can always look out the window and notice the sky and the earth or a large tree. Move your body, I invite you if you need to, to find that object or to get the right view. Take a moment for study. Notice and remember how these elders have seen New Year come and go and they are still here. What in your life and in the part of the world you can reach, do you want to be as strong and persistent and long lasting as this elder? And what might you be called to do with your heart and mind and hands to make it so? As we end this time of meditation, I invite you to think of a way to remind yourself of your intentions today. Maybe you take a stone or whatever object it is you have thought of and place it in a special place. Maybe you write your word for the year on a slip of paper and stick it in your wallet and wrap it around your ID so it just doesn't get lost in the morass of receipts. Write it on your bathroom mirror in lipstick. Take a picture of what you've just meditated with and display it where you will notice it regularly or make it the home screen on your cell phone or the background on your computer. Find a way to keep close your intentions for this year. Because again, rituals are good at dividing lines between before and after, but it is our efforts that make the changes. So as we begin this new year, I invite you to sing the song of the new year 
with us. Savannah will now play one of our videos. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and old lang syne? For old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for old lang syne. And sure. For our closing words today, I'm going to share a new poem with you by Amanda Gorman called New Day's Lyric. Amanda Gorman is a former youth poet laureate of this country who read at the inauguration of Joe Biden. She writes, may this be the day we come together. Morning, we continue to mend withered we come to weather torn we come to tend battered we come to better tethered by this year of yearning we are learning that though we weren't ready for this we have been readied by it we steadily vow that no matter how we are weighed down we must always pave a way forward this hope is our door our portal. Even if we never get back to normal, someday we can venture beyond it to leave the known and take the first steps. So let us not return to what was normal, but reach towards what is next. What was cursed, we will cure. What was plagued, we will prove pure. Where we tend to argue, we will try to agree. Those fortunes we forswore, now the future we foresee. Where we weren't aware, we're now awake. Those moments we missed are now these moments we make, these moments we meet. And our hearts, once all together beaten, now all together beat. Come. Look up with kindness yet, for even solace can be sourced from sorrow. We remember, not just for the sake of yesterday, but to take on tomorrow. We heed this old spirit in a new day's lyric. In our hearts, we hear it. For old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne. Be bold saying time this year. Be bold, sang time. For when you honor yesterday, tomorrow ye will find. Know what we fought need not be forgotten, nor for none. It defines us, binds us as one. Come over, join the day just begun. For wherever we come together, we will forever overcome. Go in peace, go in love, and Happy New Year, dear ones.